Well, happy Easter Embrace. Welcome to our church this morning. My name is John Gallagher, and I'm the lead pastor here at the church. And I just want to say welcome to you. I'm so um, just grateful to be able to spend this time together as we celebrate um, and experience kind of the joy of the resurrection. Um, Jesus has risen from the dead and overcome and conquered all these things that this world tries to throw at us, uh, to bring us down. And so we, we can rejoice. Uh, we can rejoice even in the midst of tragedy and difficulty and hard times that we're still living in. We can rejoice even as we are worshiping physically distant from one another this morning. We can rejoice even though we are facing um, really difficult things in our personal lives and in our families, um, because we know that, that Jesus has, has overcome uh, evil and death, and we wait and we long for that day uh, where Christ will come back um, and set it all right and, and wipe uh, away every tear uh, from every eye. We'll, we'll breathe new life into this world and recreate this creation so that we can live um, in true uh, abundance where, where everyone can, can have access to the things that lead to flourishing. And so we can celebrate the, the joy and the power of the resurrection that we can experience right now, but also um, we can long and look forward and celebrate that day when, when all will be made well. And I, I can't wait for that. And so today we pray all together, come Lord Jesus, come. If you don't mind, uh, go ahead and share the stream. It's Easter, you know, some people may be at home looking for a church to worship with this morning, one of your friends maybe, and who knows, they may like what they um, experience with us in our church family. And so if you don't mind sharing that, that would be great. It helps other people stay connected. Also encourage you just to get yourself ready, um, get your space ready. I know you're probably, some of y'all are scrambling right now, uh, trying to get, get situated for church, get your kids ready, whatever it may be. Um, but do whatever you can to really allow yourself to experience uh, what God may want to do in your life today. And if you want to go ahead and get your communion stuff ready too, because we're going to share that later on in the service. Well, I'm going to turn it over to Chris and Christina, and they're going to lead us in some worship this morning. And we're going to sing about the resurrection and what that means for us. And so allow these songs to just speak words over you. Sing along if you'd like wherever you're at. And I'm just excited to kind of go through this service with you today and connect with you all. So I'm going to turn it over to them and we'll spend some time worshiping together.
Jesus came into the world to bring light and hope. Throughout his earthly ministry, he was misunderstood, rejected, plotted against, and betrayed, until he, the light of the world, was extinguished on Good Friday. Though the days he spent in the tomb were long and hopeless for his ashamed and afraid disciples, the third day dawned. And when it did, two faithful followers made their way to the tomb, only to find it empty. Two women named Mary were the first to know the unshakable truth. The light had come into the darkness, but the darkness could not overcome it. Resurrection meant even the final enemy of all creation had been vanquished. Resurrection meant the light Jesus brought into the world would keep shining. It shone forth from an empty tomb. It shone forth from the face of the living Savior. And it shines forth from each and every one who follows in the way of Jesus. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Hallelujah to the light of the world. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Well, if you've just joined us recently, uh, my name is John Gallagher. I am the lead pastor here at Embrace, and I just want to say welcome to you. I particularly want to give a welcome to visitors that we may have this morning. If you are worshiping with us the first uh, or maybe the second, third time, and you feel like you're kind of new to our church, then I just want to welcome you. I'm so glad that you decided to come and be with us today. Um, if you don't mind, go ahead and share the stream. If, if you're willing to do that, it can help other people get connected to what we're doing um, here at our church. Um, if you don't follow us on Facebook, you can do that also because that's a great way um, for you to stay up to date with things that are going on um, here at our church. Um, you know, it's, it's Easter and it's a, it's a beautiful day. Uh, it's a day to be joyful, um, to be grateful. And so we're going to share a little bit about what we're grateful for. One thing we do every week at Embrace is we always share our praise and our protest. Um, we share what we're grateful for, but also what we lament, the difficult things. And you think about it, we, we need um, the cross and the resurrection. It's all part of the story uh, of Jesus. Jesus was someone who suffered greatly and went through great tragedy and sorrow and really exposed um, the evil and, and injustice and oppression in our world and, and how our world often resists the light and the goodness uh, that, that, that God wants to bring. And so we can't lose sight of, of the cross, but we also have to keep our eyes focused on the resurrection as well. And so we live in this tension between praise and protest and and, and gratitude and lament. And so even on Easter, I still want to give you an opportunity to share um, if you're protesting or lamenting everything, because the reality is we're coming into this Easter still with heavy hearts. Um, today is the day that um, many years ago, Martin Luther King was assassinated, and that really um, is just a reminder each and every year of the hatred and the violence and the um, just divisiveness and difficulty that, that, that is pervasive in our world and how often we try to silence and, and extinguish the light that, that God brings into our midst. And, and so, you know, we're, we're mindful of that today, but we're also keeping our eyes focused on Jesus and the resurrection as well. And so we live in that tension. And so my question for you today is, what are you praising God for this morning? What's bringing you joy? What are you grateful for? But also, um, what are you protesting this morning? What are you lamenting? What are some difficulties that maybe you're facing or you're seeing in our community, things that you want to offer up to the community and to God this morning? And so let's uh, spend some time interacting this morning um, in the comments as we continue to worship. So I'm going to turn it back over to Chris and Christina, and they'll continue to lead us in worship.
Amen. Well, let me uh, let me kind of see some things that y'all are sharing this morning. I always like to highlight some of that. So let's see if I can scroll back and see some of the things that y'all are grateful for. Um, Sometimes my browser here does not cooperate, uh, but I see some stuff. Tanya um, was grateful to see a lot of folks at the sunrise service this morning. I'm glad y'all were able to be a part of that. Um, I like how she called it the sunrise, S-O-N. Um, it's, I like that. So it's good to be together. Um, let's see. Some others are just excited, saying it was a great service this morning. I'm glad y'all got to do that. Sorry I couldn't be there um, just with some extra um, time I need to spend caring for this baby in the middle of the night. Um, didn't make it possible with my schedule to, to make it that early. Um, but I'm glad that y'all had a good experience. And um, I look forward to the future when you have breakfast together on Easter again. And I think next year will be a lot, feel a lot more normal for us. John Epley is grateful that the resurrection, light of Jesus overcomes evil again and again and again. I like that. Protesting that the effects of evil in this world are still seen even with the reality that it will not last forever. Amanda, good to see you and Ryan all the way from uh, Honduras uh, worshiping with us this morning. Uh, Julie Duff, praising for spring break and much uh, needed trip to the mountains. Amen for that. Paige, praising God for the beautiful sunrise service this morning and lamenting the lack of decent affordable housing in Lexington. Yes, we are with you. Praise Dan says, praise for a gorgeous Easter morning, beautiful sunrise service. Praise for opportunity to meet several folks after speaking with them online. Yeah, I know that some of y'all who have been worshiping with us online, who maybe have never visited before, I heard that some of y'all were out for the sunrise service. So I'm glad that, that you got to be there. And I look forward to meeting some of you as well when I get that chance. Uh, Zoe, one of our youth, is thankful for seeing some of her cousins and family again for Easter celebrations. Kathy Connor, praising God for online church that she dearly loves. We are so grateful that even though you don't live in Lexington, Kathy, you can worship with us. Same goes for my mom. Uh, Connie is grateful for uh, resurrection power, lamenting lack of its evidence sometimes in this world. Yes, um, I lament with you on that as well, Mom. Betty is praising the Lord for being able to go back to work yesterday. Um, nine weeks after brain surgery. Yes, we're so happy you got to go back to work. Um, that's a fresh beginning, a new start, lamenting the people who haven't figured out how to settle their differences um, without using a gun. Yes, we lament that with you as well. Um, Tanya is praising the fact that God's love never fails, um, protesting those who have done harm in the name of Jesus. Um, several friends I love feel as if they can never be welcome in church because of the harm done by people who proclaim Christ sometimes people in their own families. Yes, we lament that as well. Thank you for sharing that, Tanya. Noran is praising a much-need rest during spring break, um, protesting the emotional roller coaster that George Floyd's family is going through as they're going through the court system to seek justice. Yes, I cannot even imagine all the emotions and difficulties that his family and friends are facing um, and really the, the black community all over um, America and around the world. So Noran, thank you for sharing that this morning and bringing attention to that. Uh, Sonda, thankful Jesus rose from the dead for all of us. Um, yes, I am too. Rick Reams, praising, uh, worshiping early this morning in person and having the Trents join us, lamenting how some like to try to bend Jesus into their own mold instead of allowing Jesus to form them into what he wants. Yeah, that is a sermon right there, Rick, from a preacher. Uh, nonetheless, thank you, Rick, for sharing that. Dustin, grateful for the light of Christ that shines through so many of you, uh, lamenting the violence and death in D.C., Georgia, Colorado, and too many other places. Death is defeated, but the victory is not yet final. Yes, thank you, Dustin, for bringing attention to those um, terrible acts of violence um, and just pain and suffering that, that we're seeing all throughout the week. Uh, this past week and the weeks before. Um, so, Michael, good to see you with us today. Um, no, Michael, for a long time. Uh, Laura, praising God for the new life we find in Jesus and the new life of baby C and all the joy he has brought to John and I's life. Uh, thank you, Laura. That's my wife for sharing that. Uh, baby C has brought a lot of joy to our life, and um, I'm grateful for that also. Um, 
Diane's grateful millions have been vaccinated. Uh, yeah, I, th I heard we hit a record of the amount of vaccinations we had in a day recently, and that's wonderful. Lamenting millions of marginalized brothers and sisters can't access vaccines and health care. Um, our disparities and, and our lack of uh, equity and equality in our society is once again being exposed um, in the way vac vaccinations are getting out to folks. And um, still got a lot of work to do uh, to create a true, just, and peaceable society. Um, Rob, praising Christ, risen and present in each of us, lamenting how his name continues to be used to oppress others. Yes, we agree with you, Rob. Uh, Rachel, grateful for vaccines and hoping to be able to visit with others. Um, grateful for hope. Uh, Grant is grateful today for Jesus' indestructible life, referencing Hebrews 6.17. I like that. That is beautiful. Becky, praising this glorious Easter day, uh, protesting continued violence. Yes, we agree with that as well. Matthew, John, um, praising God for forgetting uh, to safely see some old friends this week. Uh, and thanks, Valentine. I'm also uh, I'm happy to be happy this morning and looking forward to seeing your, your face later on today. Um, yeah, thanks, Michael, um, and thanks for the congratulations. Michael was part of my youth group years ago at this church, and it's cool to be able to continue to stay in contact with him on Facebook um, and run into you every now and then, Michael, at your work. Uh, Sue, praising that God accepts me just as I am <clears throat> and the hope of our risen Lord, uh, lament that so much evil or so many accept evil and do not push back. Yeah, so much stuff y'all are sharing this morning. Continue on if you would like. Um, but I, I like to read those because it's, it's really a, a sacred time when we can be honest and be vulnerable and share what's on our hearts. And so it really does bring me joy to hear your voices. Often on a Sunday morning, I may get to talk to a few of you when we're in person, but the beauty of online is that I can hear from so many of you, hear your hearts, hear what you're facing. And we're trying to think of creative ways to bring some of that um, element into our, our times together when we come back together in person here soon. And so um, we're going to get all the good stuff when we get back in person. And I'm really, really longing for that day. So thank you all for being a part of our time together this morning. Continue to share your thoughts and ideas and to continue to connect um, this morning through the comments. That's the beautiful thing about online church. Um, there's limitations for sure. And I love being together in person much more. But one of the good things is we can connect with one another, um, even as the service is going on. And so um, feel free to do that. Let me share just a few uh, announcements with you today. Um, if you are able to give to support our ministry here at Embrace, if you see this as your church and you want to make a gift to support what we're doing to help continue make this uh, beautiful community possible, we can't do it without you. So thank you for your support and your continued investment in this ministry and your community. Um, it's an act of worship, I believe, when we give as well. Um, and so you can do that at embraceyourcity.com backslash give. You can find all the information you need. Embraceyourcity.com backslash give. And you can find all the information you need. Thank you for your support. We truly appreciate it. Um, also, we, we value prayer at our church. And so we have a couple opportunities for prayer. Um, we have an email, prayer at embraceyourcity.com. Um, I use this email to get it out to the prayer team. Tanya facilitates, facilitates that and gets it out to the team. When there's urgent requests, you know, um, she usually will get those pretty quickly after they come in and get those out. So even if you have something, hey, I need prayer right now, send it out. If you've got our numbers, you can always text and ask for prayer too. Um, but that email is the best place to start with that. Um, and, and then also... We get together at four on Wednesdays to pray on Zoom. There's a good core of us who get together each week. Um, I've not been able to join for a few weeks uh, with kind of being on part-time leave here with the, the baby, but um, I know that Christina and some others have been on there each and every week uh, praying for you all, for our church, uh, for needs that are coming up. So we post that link to our um, Facebook group. Um, each week. And so if you'd like to be a part of that, just let us know. It's the same link every week. It's a recurring one. And so if you have a link from the past, you can use that again. Also, one thing we've been doing um, for the last few months is that we've been doing sermon talkback sessions, Mondays at 8 on Zoom. Uh, we don't believe that you come to church just to hear a sermon. That's not how you're going to grow, just by hearing a sermon. You're going to have to wrestle with it. 
um, either on your own or in community, in person, um, or through Zoom. Um, but this is an opportunity for y'all to wrestle with the stuff that we're dealing with. It's on Mondays at 8 on Zoom. Come join us, thoughts, questions, ideas. Let's have some conversation. And so we post that link to our church community group. Also, it's the same link every week as well. So you can um, use a past one to get to that. And then let me see what else we've got today. Um, I'll just show you some important dates. Last, this last week, a youth group resumed from 6 to 8. Um, Wednesdays on the lawn was supposed to resume, but our weather got a little cold and a little nasty. It didn't rain as much as I thought it would, but it was still pretty cold out there. And so we, we ended up canceling that. But we'll be back on for this week. So far, the weather looks pretty good. So hopefully that holds and we'll be back Wednesday night. Um, each week, Wednesdays on the lawn at 7 o'clock. Come join us. Uh, bring a mask. We'll be doing uh, physical distancing, um, but we can still be social and talk and connect with one another. And so Wednesday, come for that youth group. If you're a middle school or high school kid, um, you're welcome to join us for youth group. We'd love to have you. Whether you're, uh, you're, your family comes here or not, you're still welcome to join us uh, for youth group 6 to 8. They're going to join, actually, from 7 to 8 for Wednesdays on the lawn. And I'll also let you know, if we cancel Wednesdays on the lawn for weather, youth group will still happen. We're not going to cancel youth group for weather. They'll still meet indoors together. So just keep that in mind. And then finally, we're going to get our feet wet, get back into being in person on Wednesdays on the lawn. And then in about a month on May 2nd, um, just a few weeks from now, we'll be doing outdoor worship at 9 a.m. every single Sunday. Should be a little warmer by then at 9 a.m. And then hopefully by the summer, we're looking at a target at the beginning of July to come back indoors for worship. And I'm looking forward to that for sure. And so keep that in mind. We'll be reminding you about all this stuff. Um, let me show you where we're at in our, in our calendar for the church calendar. It's what we use in the Wonder Room with the kids. So since we're not able to go to the Wonder Room and be in that actual space, we're showing you the calendar each and every week. You can see it's pointed to the cross um, that is the sign of Jesus, of the resurrection, um, the crucifixion and resurrection. But as we start in the white tiles, we are in Easter, the season of Easter, and so today kicks that off. And so we have come out of Lent. Um, it feels like we've been in a whole year uh, of Lent <laughs> and, and fasting and giving up things and struggling. And so I'm happy to celebrate a little bit on Easter and happy to have sunshine as well. So I'm going to show you our Wonder Room story for today. Uh, Christina is going to guide us through the story of the resurrection. Then I'll just share a few words with you about kind of some of the scriptures and break some of that down for us. So let's continue to worship and to learn as we dig into our Wonder Room story. And kids, I want to hear your thoughts, all right? So get your parents to help you if you need it to type out your thoughts. What are you wondering about this story today? Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome to the Wonder Room. Today we are going to hear the Easter story, so take a moment and get yourselves ready. When the Sabbath was over, a few of Jesus' faithful followers and friends prepared themselves to go visit the place Jesus had been buried after he was crucified. His burial place was called a tomb. Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome took spices with them on their way to the tomb. They wanted to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they set off on their way to the tomb. While they were walking, they asked one another, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? They knew they would not be able to move it themselves because it was very large and very heavy. Not knowing exactly what they would do, they continued on their way. When they were close enough that they could look up and see the tomb, 
they were amazed to realize the stone had already been rolled away. As they hurried and entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said, don't be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene who was crucified, but he has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him? Then he said, but go, tell his disciples and Peter. He is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Now, I wonder where Jesus was since he wasn't in the tomb. I wonder how long it took for the women to feel calm again after they found Jesus not in the tomb. I wonder, have you ever heard news that scared you? What else do you wonder? What questions do you have? Type them in the comments below and we will wonder together after this song.
Amen. Will you all say a prayer with me just for a moment? And then we'll look and see what we're wondering about this story of the resurrection that we find in the Gospel of Mark. But let's all bow our heads just for a moment. Why don't we begin our time of prayer just by praising God and giving gratitude to Him. So take a moment, and whatever's coming to your mind, whatever you are feeling grateful for, if you want to with your family or just where you're at right now, just speak those things to God in prayer and thank Him for the things that you are grateful for. God, I, I hear from our community many things that we are grateful for this morning. I, I have seen us express gratitude for beautiful weather, for, of course, Lord, for, for your resurrection and, and the, the fact that we too can rise from the dead. People are grateful for um, protection against COVID-19 through vaccinations. People are grateful for getting to have a break and some rest over spring break for um, trips and for getting to, to travel a little bit um, when we haven't been able to do much of that, to get into the wilderness and see your creation. Grateful for family and for friends, for, for new uh, babies and for the joy that they bring, for um, just connection and friendship for reconnecting with loved ones. Lord, we are so grateful and have so much to be grateful for. We're thankful for our family, our church family that we have here. We're thankful for this second family that, that we didn't um, necessarily even choose, that, Lord, we were born into that second time when when we were baptized and ushered into this church family. And we thank you for the joy that this community brings us each and every week. i thankful, thankful for the steadfastness and the perseverance of our people that they have stuck with us through so much. I thank you that after a year of just so much difficulty and separation and pain, that God, that, that we have stuck together and, and so grateful for that. Lord, we have so much to be thankful for. God, we also have so much pain and struggle that we want to lift up in prayer, Lord. We just want to pray over all the things that people are struggling with today, the pain that they're feeling. Um, we pray for um, our missionaries who are serving in other places, um, in Kenya and Honduras and Costa Rica, um, for the other folks that we're connected with all across the world, we pray for their unique struggles that they're facing today on this Easter Sunday. God, we are just praying for those who are dealing with depression right now. Um, this has been a, a struggle that has been intensified for so many people throughout this pandemic. We pray for those who are experiencing debilitating anxiety today. Another thing that has just been... Um, really just amplified over the last many months. We pray for those who are struggling financially um, with work. We pray that, that maybe these stimulus checks could be used to bless some folks um, and that they could uh, be able to get um, a little bit ahead or, or catch up to a place that they were at before. We pray for provision for folks. God, we pray for those suffering from loss. We pray for those who are being just... Um, triggered and, and experiencing trauma all over again as they see the, the news of, of, of the violent acts that are taking place around our nation, as they see the news of, of devastation happening from just our, our environment just lashing out in many ways from, from years of ecological devastation. Um, Lord, we pray for those who are struggling as they have watched the trial um, of Derek Chauvin and, and, and the, the things that have gone on there and, and just the, the way that that is impacting people on such a deep level. Lord, there is so much that, that we have to be praying for, and we just pray you would meet us at our time of need and that, Lord, you would help us to 
to uh, rise up some above our struggles, that we could experience some joy and some peace this morning, that peace that passes all understanding. Lord, we need you and we pray that you would meet us now. We pray that the resurrection would not be something that just happened 2,000 years ago. We wouldn't just celebrate what happened to Jesus a long time ago, but that we would celebrate that we can have resurrection power right here and now. Help us, Lord, to see that that is the power of the resurrection, that, that we too can rise. And I pray that we could rise this morning, that we could start over, that we could experience new life this morning morning, even in the place of death. We thank you for the word of new life that the women received, even in a tomb, a place of death. And as we sit in a place that feels like death is winning all around us, in the ruins of, of just suffering and tragedy and harm that we have done to ourselves and others here in this place that we are in right now, in this time, Lord, I pray that we could hear a word of new life. They could speak deep to our deepest places within us and help us to have the courage and fortitude to stand up and be strong this morning in the name of Jesus. We pray all this in the power of Jesus' name, who taught us this beautiful prayer a long time ago to pray, and, and we've been praying it ever since. So if you know the Lord's Prayer, then pray it along with us. If you don't know this prayer, that's okay. You can just hear these words that Jesus taught his disciples to pray a long time ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you all for just spending a moment um, in prayer with me uh, this morning, and I'm just uh, grateful that we can go to God in prayer, that he has opened up a path for us um, to do that. Let me see what we're wondering this morning, and then I just have a few words to share with you all. Um, Stacy's wondering about the spices. <laughs> And then kind of making a, a humorous comment about an accusation that was leveled against the early Christians, uh, that they were cannibals. Um, and you think about the Lord's Supper, I think that was probably the reason, Stacy, uh, as you probably know. Um, but when they talked about eating the, the, bread, uh, the, the flesh of Jesus and drinking the blood of Christ, many people took that literally. And they were accused of that. There was a lot of misunderstanding about Christians, particularly the early Christians, so thank you for pointing that out, Stacy. Uh, Dustin, um, he realized it, it was. Uh, he realized that Mark includes Salome and Luke, um, or Mark includes Salome and Luke includes Joanna, but they both include the two Marys. Yeah, he was just pointing out. He just realized this recently. Um, I think is what he was saying there. Um, Zoe, one of our youth, wonders if anyone had such faith in Jesus that they knew he would rise from the dead. Yeah, was anybody expecting this? Um, did anybody expect that? That's something I wonder too. Uh, Rob, love that the angel um, at the beginning said, don't be afraid, and again at the resurrection, don't be afraid. That's a message we hear all throughout the Bible. Um, why can't the Gospels agree on the resurrection's accounts? Yes, yeah, Stacey, that's a, it's a challenge to see different accounts of the resurrection and so one part of that is a challenge, but I think it's also a blessing um, because we get to hear different perspectives on the resurrection. Um, Beckett wonders, one of our elementary kids, wonders how long it took them to get to the tomb. Thank you for sharing that, Beckett. That is a great thing to wonder. How long did it take them to get there and where were they coming from is what I wonder. Um, how could the Lord be mistaken for a gardener, Stacy wonders. <laughs> it's an interesting question. Atticus, one of our little ones, wonders if Jesus went to get some food, um, <laughs> this kid loves to eat. Uh, Baby D wonders if Jesus had any kitty cats uh, like his cat Solomon. I don't know if he had cats as a pet or not. And yeah, what did he do after he woke up from the tomb? Did he go get some food? I bet he went to eat. Um, Jesus liked to eat just like uh, you do, Atticus, I imagine. Um, what else? Um, tch -tch -tch. 
Let's see. Kathy Connor, I wonder why, what the women discussed about the empty tomb as they hurried away. Who took him? Where is he? What if someone thinks we had something to do with it? Who did this? I'm so devastated. Uh, what can we do? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure what was going on um, as they hurried away. Yeah, they were terrified. Mark is really honest. He doesn't say like they were overjoyed. No, they were terrified. And that's something that I wonder about. Well, why were they so terrified at the thought of resurrection? Um, we wonder, Grant, um, Caroline, wonder why Jesus chose to go ahead of the disciples on to Galilee. Why the focus on Galilee? Yeah, thank you, Grant. Uh, we're going to get into that today. So you're, Patrick, good to see you. Long time no see. Patrick, I'm so happy you're worship withing us today, um, and I'm glad you're back with us, um, and you made it back to the States and that you're doing okay. So I look forward to seeing you soon. Um, lots of good things uh, this morning, so thank you for sharing um, I'm just going to share a little bit uh, today um, about uh, this passage. And so I um, hope y'all can bear with me this morning as we break down some of this scripture. And ho hopefully you can experience just a word of hope. Um, I want to say something. I'm not sure earlier when I was, Julie referenced, uh, I think it was, Page, uh, someone referenced, or Noran, I think, referenced George Floyd and the trial about his murder. And I just want to, I don't know if I misspoke and called it the George Floyd trial, but it certainly is not. It's the trial of Derek Chauvin. And the tragedy of this trial is that it, it, it often what the, what the defense is trying to do is make it a trial about George Floyd. And, and I, I, I don't know if I misspoke on that, but I wanted to make sure to clarify on that, that, that that's part of the challenge here. It has nothing to do with him. He, has, there's, he ain't on trial. And nothing about his life warrants him being killed in that tragic and awful way. And we lament that. And, and I just want to make sure I didn't mention that earlier um, as I was reading through the comments. Um, so we're going to share a little bit about this passage. And, and I want to ask you a question as we start. All right. And so here's the question that I have to ask you. Do you ever feel like you need a do-over. Do you ever feel like you need a do-over? You know, I, I feel like that a lot in my life. Have you ever completely failed at something and you just feel like you need to start over and try again? Has that ever happened to you? Have you ever completely failed at something and you just need to start over and try again? <laughs> Have you ever had one of those days when just nothing seems to go right and you just need to begin again <laughs> the next day and just say, I'm starting fresh because that didn't go the way I wanted it to? Have you ever been in a relationship and y'all just love each other to death, but you end up hurting each other a lot? That's probably true for almost every marriage out there. And, and, and you just want to get past the hurt and you just want to start fresh. You know, I, some days my wife and I, uh, we just aren't clicking. It happens in marriage a lot. Um, and, and a common thing that happens is one of us will just come to the other one and say, hey, do you want to try to start over? You want to try to start over? Let's see if we can begin again. And, and sometimes that works. <laughs> sometimes it's a little easier said than done. But I just want to thank God today for the chance to begin again the chance to start over, the chance to try another time. That is a beautiful thing about the resurrection. The chance to begin again, to start over and to try another time. You know, as I think about this past year, I imagine many of us haven't always put our best self forward. Do y'all agree with me that maybe over the last year we haven't always put our best self forward? We've been through so much. A lot of us have felt very low for a long time. And perhaps we haven't felt quite like ourselves. We've personally struggled, and that's likely affected uh, the way we've treated others. Am I right in assuming that many of us could use a fresh start? Or a new beginning, maybe an opportunity to do better. Am I right on that? Um, we're going to get into this a little bit because I think that we, we do have that invitation and that offer this morning. 
First, let me remind you about the three subplots that I've mentioned that we find in the Gospel of Mark. And, and what we find is Jesus created community by calling disciples. And so Mark really does focus a lot on Jesus' relationship to his disciples. Mark also spends a lot of time focusing on Jesus' ministry among the crowds. And the crowds were this kind of teeming mass of poor and struggling people. Majority of the world was poor and lived in poverty and suffered. And Jesus spent a lot of time among those folks. Also, a big part of Mark's gospel is Jesus' conflict with the authorities. He's always having a conflict with the authorities, the religious and political authorities. And, and really, the Jewish authorities were both. They had political power and also religious power. And so at the end of Jesus' life, in these last uh, few chapters of Mark, we find all these actors in the story on the stage for the final act. And every one of them, all three of these Folks share something in common, and it's a tragic thing they share in common. But what they share in common is this. Every one of them rejected Jesus. They all rejected Jesus. Now, we should expect the authorities to reject Jesus, all right? Because Jesus challenged them over and over and over again. He didn't let up. He was very critical of the authorities, he actually went into their territory and would do these direct actions sometimes that really made them angry, disturb things, disrupt things. He really did not back down in his critique of the way they treated and hurt people. All right, We also shouldn't be surprised that the crowds eventually turned on Jesus either. Crowds can be fickle. Crowds are often swayed by popular opinion and in the way that media and power spins and manipulates things and messes with our minds. Today we see that the crowds can be easily manipulated by social media and the way that things are kind of just inserted and put it into our feeds and we believe that they are true. It's also just very easy to go along with the crowd. Right? It's easy just to go along with what the crowd's doing. I imagine sometimes if I was there in the crowd when they chose Barabbas over Jesus, if I would have maybe just gone along with what the crowd was doing. The crowd eventually, at the end of Mark's gospel, chooses Barabbas. Um, he was likely one of the Sicarii who were known to slit throats, and they were revolutionary guys who were really going against uh, the Roman Empire, and they chose Barabbas and his way of resistance, which was violence, over Jesus' way of resistance, which was love. The authorities in the crowds rejected Jesus, but if one group was going to stick with Jesus, if one group was going to stick with him, you would think it would have been his good friends, these disciples who ministered with him and spent time with him for three whole years. You would think they would stick with Jesus up until his death. But no, they rejected him. And their rejection probably hurt Jesus the most. Just a side note that I need to say, um, you know, in, in a lot of my research, these three subplots have, have been put forth. There's three subplots that we find in Mark, but there's actually a fourth subplot that's really important in Mark. And we see it at the resurrection, and we see it at many times, all the way from the beginning of the gospel, um, where uh, all the way at the beginning, all the way to the end. And this fourth subplot is this. It's the way that women respond to Jesus in the gospel. Mark holds women up in his gospel, really as examples of true leadership and discipleship. He, he truly does. Um, while the authorities and the crowds and the disciples do reject Jesus, the women, they stuck with him to the end, and they model for us what it means to be a true leader, which is a servant leader. And that's what Jesus came to do. And the women figured that out way quicker than the men did. They are a model for us what a true disciple ought to be. And so I want you to know that that fourth subplot is running through this gospel, and we need to pay attention to that. So... Jesus faced so much betrayal. In his last moments, he was deeply betrayed by his friend Judas, um, which it must have been very tragic for him. Judas became kind of a mole in the group. They were likely hiding out underground at this point in Jerusalem because it was becoming very dangerous. The authorities were searching for them. 
and they found a mole to stick in the group of rat named Judas to rat them out, right? And to turn them over. And so Judas knew that they were going to the garden to pray. And so Judas led the authorities to the garden of Gethsemane, straight to where Jesus, James, John, and Peter were all praying. Once the authorities arrived to arrest Jesus, the disciples were afraid and fearful, and they all ran away in fear and fleed, leaving Jesus all alone to face his imprisonment, his torture, and unjust trial. Peter, he didn't completely run away because he kind of followed Jesus there for a bit at a distance to see what would happen. While Jesus was being unjustly sentenced to death, Peter stood outside the courtroom by the fire. And some guards noticed Peter and knew that Peter was one of Jesus' followers. At one point, his accent gave him away because he was from up north in the country in Galilee. And his kind of um, rural accent kind of gave him away when being in the city of Jerusalem. And three times they questioned him. Three times Peter flat out denied that he knew Jesus. He heard the rooster crow and he was reminded of what Jesus said about him denying him. And tormented by his cowardice and betrayal, he cursed his life and he fled. Imagine how the disciples and Peter, who was kind of one of their leaders, felt. Imagine how they felt in this dark, dark, dark moment in Jesus' life. You see, not only was their friend and mentor suffering immensely, that would have caused them incredible pain to know that Jesus was suffering and they couldn't do about it. He was about to be executed and they had profoundly let him down. So not only were they struggling with the reality that he was facing all this and they couldn't help him, but they had also let him down in that moment. Not only were they mortified by losing their teacher and friend, but they also felt incredible guilt and shame for not sticking with him in his darkest moments. I'm sure they questioned themselves over and over and over and over again. Other Gospels tell us that after Jesus was executed on Holy Saturday, right, the disciples were fearfully hiding in a room behind a locked door paralyzed by a mix of fear and shame and embarrassment at their failures. The story of Jesus ended with the disciples fleeing and running away and Peter denying he even knew Jesus. What a sad, tragic ending, right? Well, good news for them and good news for us. The story doesn't stop there. Let me read it for you. It's, not, it's only eight verses, so let me read the scripture for us. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb, and they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they... Looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell the disciples and Peter he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. So this is our scripture for today. Um, And like I said, uh, the women are still there doing for Jesus what the men wouldn't do. They went to give Jesus that proper burial Um, that he deserved, not just being thrown into a tomb, um, but they went to give him that proper burial after the Sabbath was over. And though they entered the tomb and they saw a young man in a white robe and it scared them half to death and, and he spoke to them. And let me tell you what he said one more time. He said, don't be alarmed, he said. You were looking for Jesus the Nazarene who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him, but go. Tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. 
There you will see him just as he told you. Tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. The story of discipleship isn't actually over. Though it seemed like it was over, it's not over. The young man specifically tells the women to inform the disciples who fled and Peter who denied that Jesus is waiting for them in Galilee. Everything fell apart. The whole narrative, the whole story fell apart. But Jesus offers hope that it all can be put back together. You know, um, I think Grant pointed out that why did he go to Galilee? Well, here's what I think. Galilee signals a new beginning for those who had abandoned or denied Jesus. He promises those who had failed him that he had gone before them and that grace was waiting for them in Galilee. And we can receive that promise too. Those who have failed him, those who have suffered immensely and fallen short of what God has called us to do, those who have failed Jesus, he's telling them that I have gone before them and that grace is waiting for them in Galilee. You know, the writer of Mark clearly shows Peter, for, for example, to be a traitor, to be a failure. He is not shy about his critique of Peter, but he also shows Peter to be someone who is deeply loved by Jesus. Imagine what those first readers of Mark would think. If Jesus can offer this word of grace and hope to Peter, the traitor, <laughs> then perhaps this word of grace and hope can be offered to me too. If Peter is invited to meet Jesus in Galilee for a new beginning, then maybe Jesus offers the same invitation to me to go meet him and experience a new beginning. You know, since the Gospel of Mark uh, was completed uh, many, many years ago, people have been very disturbed by the ending of this Gospel. Do y'all do understand why people are disturbed? You know, we don't see Jesus at the end. Um, we don't see the resurrected Lord. Um, we're not sure if the women actually go and tell the disciples and Peter what the young man said. It says that they were terrified, and they didn't say a word to anyone, right? They were terrified. The gospel just ends very strangely, very abruptly. It feels very unfinished, doesn't it? Where's the happy and tidy ending that we always like to have in our stories? This abrupt and strange ending led many people, um, led some folks to add their own ending to the gospel. There's a couple of other endings that have been added. And, and they're, they're believed that those were not the original endings, but they were added later. And really what they seem to be doing is trying to add additional endings to the gospel to try to make it more acceptable. But but isn't this what we've done ever since Jesus died and rose and went into heaven? We've been trying to add things to the gospel to try to make it more appealing and acceptable. We twist it and try to make it a little more palatable to what we want to read instead of reading the gospel for what it really is a book about how to be radical disciples of Jesus. You know, the ending of Mark is very strange, but I think there's power in the way Mark ends his gospel. His unfinished ending signals to us that the story isn't actually over. It's not over. It's an invitation at the end of Mark's gospel for us now as readers to enter into the story and begin it maybe for the first time or restart our discipleship journey with Jesus. The gospel of Mark is what we could call a circular book, and it's pretty powerful when you think about it. So it began in Galilee with a call to follow Jesus. And everybody, these disciples and many others, followed Jesus along the way. And their way eventually took them to Jerusalem, and the, the story ended in tragic failure and disappointment. Yet at the end of the book, the disciples are invited to go back to Galilee, the place where it all began, and start the journey over. The story takes us back to the beginning so we can start over and go at it again. 
in a sense, the story, as we move through it time and time again, takes us deeper and deeper and deeper into discipleship. The only way, if we're going to see the resurrected Jesus in this story, is we've got to go back to Galilee, and we've got to find him on the way. The empty tomb matters to Mark, but what really matters to Mark is following the resurrected Jesus in our day-to-day lives, in our communities, in our families, in the places where we live and work. You know, as I've studied the Gospel of Mark the last few months, um, I felt very inspired by this book. I've read it with fresh eyes. I've, I've seen Jesus with fresh eyes. I've been inspired. I've been challenged. I'm really starting to think, what about my life needs to change? Um, I, I've been inspired to want to be a better follower of Jesus. And, and part of the way I've felt here, I've felt inspiration, I've felt good about it, but I've also kind of felt like, man, I've got a lot of work to do <laughs> if I'm going to be a radical disciple of Jesus. I've got so much work left to do. In a sense, I feel like Jesus is inviting me, hey, John, why don't we start this discipleship journey all over again? I hear Jesus saying to me, hey, John, you've done good. You, you've, you've been trying, and yes, you've done well, but you've also made a lot of mistakes. You've missed some things. You, you've settled into things that aren't maybe exactly my best for you. You've still got a lot to learn, so let's go back to the beginning and let's relearn again what it means to follow my way. You know, the powerful part of the way this story ends is that there is no ending to it. The story is not over. This is a signal to all who seek to follow Jesus that their story is not over. Your story is not over. Failed discipleship, messing up, it can be redeemed by grace. So have you you screwed up? Are you disappointed with where you're at in your life right now? Do you wish you could just start over? Do you need a do-over, like I asked at the beginning? Well, the good news is there is grace. Jesus' friends really messed up. They felt like giving up. They bore the unbearable weight of guilt and shame throughout their entire bodies and existence, right? Yet Jesus invited them to a fresh start to get it right the next time. This is the power of the resurrection, that Jesus, yes, he rose from the dead 2,000 years ago, but the power of the resurrection is not what happened so long ago, I don't think. It's the fact that we, too, can rise today. We, too, can rise. The power of the resurrection was for Jesus, but it's also for you. It's for me. And perhaps Jesus is calling you to rise up this morning, to take his hand, and to start again. You know, following Jesus is a hard, hard road to travel. He asks so much of us. Um, He demands a lot of us. (laughs) His way is so countercultural. It's so backwards. It's so upside down. There is rejection. There is loss. There is pain, yes. But I will tell you, there is always grace. And even in a story like Mark, where we've seen, it's a very challenging book. It makes us uncomfortable. It ends with grace. It ends with that call to go back to Galilee, find Jesus there again on the way, and let's start over. Let's get it right again. Let's get it right the next time. There's always grace for the journey. Failed discipleship can always be redeemed by grace. That's the beautiful thing about the way this story ends. The story is not over. Your story is not over. I have some questions. It was a very simple questions today, but I always like to give you something to reflect on to help you kind of get into this. And if you have a journal, you can write these down and reflect on them. The first one is this, just the disciples fled. Peter denied, <laughs> messed up in a terrible way. They, they messed up and they got off track and they were not on the way of Jesus. How have you failed to follow the way of Jesus in your daily life? And I say in your daily life because I want you to think about your day-to-day existence. How are you following Jesus or how are you not following Jesus? Lent was a time of confession and searching your heart and repentance. And now we're at Easter. So what have you been wrestling with over the last few weeks? Think about it. Where do you fit in this story? Maybe you would be one of those members of the crowd who just kind of went along with everyone else. 
But how have you failed to follow the way of Jesus in your day-to-day life? And if you had a chance to start over, what would you do differently the next time around? If you could think about, man, if I could do this differently, here's what I would want to change. Repentance is not just about saying I did something wrong. It's about turning towards Jesus once again. But here's the beautiful thing. There is an invitation from Jesus. You do have a chance to start over. So will you accept Jesus' invitation to new life and a fresh start? And and my hope would be, your answer would be yes, and that you could come to him now, even as you're at your house or wherever you're at, and and pray that God would, would help you and empower you through the power of the resurrection to start over and to continue and to turn towards Jesus once again. This can be the beginning of something great for you. This could be the beginning of a a, a fresh start and a new way of living and existing in this world. Maybe you can get a little bit more on the path that Jesus has laid out for you. That's the power of the resurrection, that there is new life that's offered in Jesus. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, I encourage you to spend some time reflecting on those questions as we share communion and as also as we uh, sing a song at the end of our service here. Um, But if you all could go ahead and get your communion stuff out, um, then we'll go ahead and share communion together. Communion's about um, really what Jesus offered up for us by giving up his life for us, but it's also um, about the, the life and the freedom that Christ offers us through the power of his resurrection. And so... If you want to get your food out, whatever food you've got, um, I've got a little wafer here. You may have something different. But go ahead. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ broken for you. If you want to get out your drink, whatever you're going to share this morning for your drink, um, I've got some grape juice. You may have something different. But take and drink. This is the blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. God, thank you so much for meeting us here in this moment. We thank you for the promise of new life. We thank you that you give us a chance to to unlearn, to relearn, uh, to make mistakes. Um, Give us freedom to fall down and to get back up. And we thank you that you don't leave us alone, but that you're with us through it all. Lord, it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, let's end our time together by singing another song, and then we'll we'll send one another out with a benediction after that. So I'm going to turn it back over to our worship team. They're going to lead us in a beautiful song about how the resurrection power is available to us here today.
was bottled for three days. This body that could not be made. I got his robber grave. I got his Amen. Well, thank you all for being here with us today. Um, thank you for spending some time with us on this Easter Sunday. Um, you know, there's, there's hope. Um, there is always hope with, with Jesus. And so I'm so grateful um, for Christ and what he gives to me and to you and to our world each and every day. So um, prepare your hearts uh, to receive the benediction. May the love of God the Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, now and forever. Amen. Go in God's peace. I love you all. We'll see you next time.